Turks and Caicos is famous the world over for its beautiful beaches and its crystal clear Caribbean waters. This small cluster of islands offer a diverse mix of sceneries, from luxurious accommodations in Provinciales to the undeveloped charm of Salt Key. You cannot come to Turks and Caicos without partaking in the national favorite, which is conch. I am so excited today. My good friend, Chef Colin Watson, has prepared a spectacular conch tasting menu that starts off with a conch ceviche, a scored conch that is grilled, and a spectacular dessert that actually uses conch in a ganache over bread pudding with grilled pineapple. All for a spectacular taste of history from Turks and Caicos. A Taste of History is made possible by Sandals Resorts, the luxury included vacation. Home to some of the world's most beautiful beaches and pristine ocean water. The tropical nation of Turks and Caicos lays claim to some very unique history and delicious Caribbean fare. Salt production, the primary source of the island's economy for centuries, is now a thing of the past, but the remains of the first major salt producer in the world still sit in their antique form in several places throughout the country. Countless small keys dot the island chain, many of which are uninhabited by humans. One key in particular, known locally as Iguana Island, plays host to the indigenous Turks and Caicos rock iguana. What was once a source of food for the island's native inhabitants now faces critical endangerment and are protected by law. The queen conch is another important species on the island. This beautiful marine snail is a national symbol and a popular ingredient in the local cuisine. Look at that. How are you doing? How do you fancy a bit of conch? Look at you guys. See you. Beautiful. We're going to go and get some more. Good man. Good good man. Catch you in a bit. When we talked about you're going to make this unbelievable Bobo conch tour, I didn't expect you to go out to the ocean and actually catch those guys. Well, Warren, I think to have a person with your character and your history, um, it couldn't be any other way, right? It was there was there was that way on the way. You wanted fresh conch, you wanted a Provo fresh conch tour. We went diving this morning. So this is Provo's finest fresh conch. Beautiful. I'm um, still live in the shell. Yep. We think we need probably about another six or seven conch to do the menu. What a great job. Thanks, Walter. So Greg, we got our conch out of the shell right here, so now we can get started. There's a million recipes, or maybe more. For everybody has their own variation of a ceviche. Every person you talk to, depending on what island they come from, they think theirs is the best. And I'm going to say Provo, this conch, is probably the best ceviche we've well, got. Well, it has to be. It's your recipe, right? It's my recipe, and the best part is all the ingredients, local ingredients, right? We're going to marinate this in a nice green oil once everything's done. And the oil we're going to do today is quite unique, because we're going to use some fresh mint leaves. So we've got the fresh moringa here, which is very... You just get that little smell. Unique to the island. We're just going to start off first with this so we can allow it to infuse, take on the green color, the chlorophyll, and be a nice green, bright, vibrant oil. Gotcha. Now this is kind of your little secret because most people don't really do it, they just use regular oil, right? That's right. Keep doing this for about three, four minutes until it just breaks right down. Now it'll just be our nice little dressing on top of the ceviche. You know, we're gonna cheat there and then this is great too, right? You just think of all the peppers that are here on the island. Everything is just so it's so fresh, and, and the beauty of it, the freshness is, because the sun is so hot, as soon as we see this ripening, we pull it off. And we got these beautiful little baby peppers here. I've seen them, nice. Yeah, take a little chop on there, which is very, very... It's a lot of color you gotta add to it, because like we said, the conch itself doesn't have its own flavor, so you gotta add into it. Exactly. When you get that hot, blistering sun out, to have a conch ceviche, a nice little rum, or a cold beer on the beach, it's just, it's fabulous and it's refreshing. Nice fresh red onion there. Could not be spicy enough for me. Okay, so maybe we'll go. Uh, <laughs> half You're forgetting, a I hang out in the islands. So. 
No problem. So the one thing we will do, take these, out the, we'll take out those seeds there. Yeah, because uh, they're, they're dangerous. Those are the worst parts. Very, very hot. And we'll just finely chop this up because uh, one little piece too big there could almost become too much for us. It looks beautiful already, not even the crunk in it, huh? No, that's right. <laughs> so this scotch bonnet, it's going to bring out some good heat, right? It's really going to get the palate moving. We're going to have a little bit of bite here from the scotch bonnet. So we're going to use a nice local mango here, which is really going to balance out the heat. Yeah. It's going to give us that nice sweetness. The mango kind of neutralizes a little bit, the, su the sweetness of the mango. Exactly, right? So we're just going to do, we don't need a lot. We just need enough to, just to balance things out. And you can see how beautiful Nice and ripe. Yep. And ripe this mango is how soft it is, right? Beautiful. Juicy, which is perfect. You actually want to disintegrate it anyway, correct? Exactly. Then obviously the lemon juice and the lime juice, whatever you put into it, puts the acidity back. Yeah, and I've got a little, little surprise, a little twist on it as well. We're going to hit it with a little bit of local nutmeg. Um, very unique. It's got that nutty, florally flavor, something that's going to you know, surprise people. So we're just going to grate this right in there. There's barely a recipe that I do in a taste of history that doesn't use nutmeg. It because is, in the 18th century, everybody was crazy about know, nutmeg. And it, to me, it's so underrated right now. We're just the beautiful salt we have from the islands. Can't get any more local. And the reason I'm putting a little bit of salt in right now is just to start letting it break down to really start moving things around there, which is fabulous. I'm just gonna start with the zest of a lemon. So a little bit of lemon. A little bit of orange. A little bit of orange zest, right? The two go extremely <laughs> well together. It's great though. And then we're just gonna do the juice of half an orange there. And then we're gonna hit it with the juice of a full lemon. The flavors already come all together. So now we're gonna to go to our fresh conch, actually still warm from the water. That's how beautiful it is. We're just gonna trim a little couple of pieces off. It's already been cleaned up, trimmed. And you can see this. Can't get any fresher than this. So we're gonna just cut this as thin as we possibly can. We don't want it too thin because we don't want it to cook. Because it won't take long with the, the lemon juice you have in there to exactly, uh, disintegrate. Right? You're having a ceviche, something like this. You don't want a frozen product. You don't no. want something that's been sitting in the on the shelf for a long the time. The word frozen doesn't exist in our vocabulary. We're just going to hit it with a little bit of pepper, black pepper. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little more salt. So we're just going to give this a nice little mix. And you can see that. And you can almost smell it. All the acid, the orange and the lemon. Already. You smell it, I want to eat it. Yeah, hold, just give me one. <laughs> so we're just going to drop that fresh ceviche right on the plate there. Beautiful oil. You can see that. And we'll just drizzle that fresh herb oil on top, just like that. And we're going to just hit that with a little bit of fresh cilantro. All right, sir, I think we're good to go. You are the conch master. Thank you. Fantastic. Enjoy. It's ready for a cold beer now. The flavor, <laughs> the profile <laughs> of the different flavors is so unique, huh? That's excellent. Very nice. That sweetness, that spicy, you get the fresh mint in there. Very, very well done. Colin, you clean up nice. We come into the main event of the Provo Conch Tour. My style of cookery on a, a lovely location like this right here on the beach is all about having fun, taking my time, enjoying the scenery, enjoying the weather. I've got some beautiful yams, I've got some um, fresh coconuts. The recipe itself is going to take us somewhere between six and seven hours. Very simple recipe for yeah. the, the yams. I'm going to take the yams exactly as they are. I washed them off earlier. We're going to slow roast them three hours over our open fire, straight on the top of the fire very slowly, every 15 or 20 minutes, going to turn them to keep the potato rolling. So I'm going to take a couple of the coconuts water just to take the top off them. And um, the water I'm actually going to use um, through the, the recipe today, we're going to braise our conch in the coconut water. You can never go wrong utilizing coconut in anything. So beautiful. The coconut cream that we have is yeah. really just a coconut meat which has been pureed and squeezed out right so chef so the meat of the matter the reason you're here the provo conch so this is going to be the main course uh, main ingredient which is the live fresh conch from Turks and Caicos I'm going to do a beautiful island rub on the conch infuse it with some coconut water coconut milk um, coconut cream which is basically what we got from the, the the inside of the coconut 
We've got some beautiful herbs, spices on the table. I've got my island rub seasoning here. So next is the coconut cream. I'm gonna mix that together with the island rub. So you can see already all those flavors and mixtures coming together. You can smell it, you smell the aroma already. It's very strong, so just take a little. Wow. Serious. So I'm also, Ooh. I'm also gonna put a little bit of our coconut water. And I'm gonna mix all that together. So you can see the scotch bonnet peppers, you yep, can see the blends, you can see the spices. So I'm just gonna take the conch and drop the conch inside. How long you let it marinate before? So it doesn't really need to marinate for, for long because the conch itself is really gonna take in those strong flavors. So I've got my pot on the fire. I've allowed the onions and garlic just right. to soften up. Yep. So the sweetness of the coconut yep. really attacks mm -hmm. the garlic and the red onions, again, nice yep. and soft comes through. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our conch and very gently just drop it in. And I'm gonna pour over the rest of the spice. I'm gonna turn your potatoes for you, chef. Oh, they're roasting nice. Oh yeah, look at this. I'm just gonna put the remaining coconut water there. Yep. I'm gonna just shake that off and then that's gonna braise. I love it in the beginning just to get a little bit of heat in there. And when it starts to come to a boil, we'll just pull it to a comfortable area on the fire and just let that simmer for three or four hours. Accessible only by boat or small plane, the remote island of Salt Key in Turks and Caicos is a place where time has stood still. Limestone buildings from the 18th century still stand as monuments to its prosperous past as a major salt producer. Salt Key is one of the most unique places in the Caribbean. This island is now home to just around 62 permanent residents, and it's often called the Caribbean of days past. In the late 1600s, British colonials from Bermuda saw the potential of the island's shallow salinas. These naturally forming salt ponds, along with the island's low annual rainfall, made it a perfect location to produce salt. When the colonial Bermudians first came, what they did was take the salinas and cut them up into different sections, put drains, put windmills, put gates, so that the water could run through. And I guess you needed a flat uh, surface for this, so therefore uh, Salt Key was ideal. It was ideal for it, and salt just produced itself from nature. The island's constant exposure to sunlight would slowly evaporate the water, and once the salt started to crystallize, it would be ready for raking and harvest. A lot of hard work, all day back-breaking work, Imagine working in the salt ponds with the sun beating on the crystal. That was hard on their eyes as well. It is believed that organized mass production and exportation of this valuable commodity began on Salt Key before any other place on Earth. These salinas provided salt for many international locations. Most interesting to me is the connection with the Revolutionary War. Salt from this spot made its way all the way to the battlefields of the Mid-Atlantic and was used to preserve meats eaten by George Washington and his Continental Army. At the height of Salkey between the 1800s and the 1900s, we had about 1,000 people living here. We produced 67,000 tons annually. Since the 1960s, these shallow ponds have been unused by people but have created a perfect home for the island's native donkeys. Chef, I know the salt industry ended in 1960, but I was able to secure some salt for you. I know you will enjoy using this to cook some nice cuisine. Just imagine the pond being full of those cuisines. Full of that. Beautiful. Salt from salt Made key. Made in salt key. <laughs> So everything's really coming together. I'm gonna to start to make the mashed potato. That's one of the final things to do before we grill and skewer the conch. Scoop the actual sweet potato um, meat from the, the jacket itself into the bowl. Beautifully cooked, look at that. Look at that water. So the yeah. jacket itself, yeah. I can easily, easily peel it all the way back. 
You cooked a few of those in your days. Yeah, I can take my <laughs> take my spoon and just. I'm now gonna make my guava jam with the raisins with the coconut. So I'm gonna take my guava jam, and that's mixing with the with the actual coconut itself. I'm gonna take the rum soaked raisins, drop them into. So Walter, you. Do the honours. So this, this is uh, the, the rum that's produced. This here, is our it? local Bambara. I've never, never rum had yet. Right, right here in the island. Yeah. Well, let me see. Let me see what I think about it. Let me see. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Serious rum, though. Very nice. Here we go. How much? A couple of tablespoons would be good to start. It's a nice bit of rum I got there. I like this recipe. Already. Nice one. Nice one. <laughs> I'm going to take the, the guava, the coconut, the raisins, and the rum and just mix them all together. You smell the flavors coming yeah, from that? Can. So that's the guava jelly. You, you keep the coconut in there for a little crunch, right? Yeah, so that's, it, that's the texture. You're going to get the, yeah. the flavor from the, the rum and the raisins. So, Walter, there's a couple of other ingredients left to go in. Right now, to finish this stage of the recipe, is going to be the meringue. After I get the meringue in, I'm going to ask you to give it a little stir. So, the meringue is a local herb, full of flavor, full of nutrients, very good for the body. We're adding it to the recipe just to keep that holistic. So I'm next gonna take the potato and then just drop the potato in and use the back of the spoon just to crush it through. It, yeah, yeah. Put a little dice through there. And then I'm just gonna take the spoon. Just mash it up. So those flavours are going nowhere but staying in the bowl. Mm -hmm. We've got the rum raisins, we've got the coconut, we've got the merengue, we've got the sweet potato, we've got the bambara rum. Here he goes. Yeah. And then again, I'm just going to chop it mm -hmm. down. You can see it really starting to come together mm -hmm. now. Beautiful. I don't think it gets any better than that one, Laura. We've got one last ingredient to put into the mash. I've got a little bit of the coconut milk which is the coconut milk, the coconut water, and a little bit of the coconut cream. So a little tiny bit just going in there. So what the coconut milk is going to do is just make it all that more richer. I could eat this as a dessert. I know, I? for sure. <laughs> Final few things going into the mash. I've got my nutmeg, my spint cinnamon, and my allspice just to keep it nice. And the flavors is unbelievable. Just sit in the middle. I'm just going to sit it sit slightly off centre, just a little bit. So, as I said before, I like to cook socially and family style. So we're going to serve the four portions in this one bowl. I'm going to take the conch itself and just cut nice little strips of the conch. You see how it's still holding its beautiful white flesh yeah. inside. The conch's beautifully tender, right? So you can just push it all the way through. So that's your slow braised conch skewered onto the sugar cane skewer. All right, the score's on the grill, chef. Nice one. This is our yellow pepper coulis. Peppers, white onions, olive oil, coconut milk, coconut cream. Red pepper coulis, identical. I'm getting super excited now. These sugar cane skewered conch skewers, they've been sitting on the grill for about 15 minutes just to chill and relax and take on a little bit more flavor. So I'm gonna take the, the skewers themselves and just rest them right into the mash. How does that look, Walter? That one's for me and you for a run later on. Awesome. I'm getting super excited now. This is our yellow pepper coulis. I'm just gonna do one of the brochettes with the yellow and you can still see how the peppers have held up in the coolie itself, a little bit running on the back. Red peppers, white onions, olive oil, coconut milk, coconut cream. So, of hard. And I'm going to just finish it all to a nice little leaf of the fresh merengue. There we have fire roasted jams, guava jam, rum soaked raisins, sugar cane skewered conch. Voila. I mean, this is not food, this is art. Good to see here. You're, so, an, you're, you're an artist. So tender, so much flavor, and such a unique presentation. You gotta give it up. High five on you. 
Nice Fantastic. One. Thank you. Hi, this is Pat and this is Pat's Place. It's an amazing moment sitting here in a small restaurant that's owned by Pat, who has her own style of cooking at Salt Key. I pounded the conch to bruise the mussels out because the conch is thick, has the thick mussels. As a chef, I always like to meet other chefs, especially understanding their culinary philosophy. Anna, fix one plate and knife and fork. Beautiful. Today, I've prepared for you cracked conch, which is the favorite of most people who come to the island, they must have pets crack conk. I don't measure anything because I got measurements on my head. <laughs> this is still basically from fresh from farm to table. The conk was caught yesterday. The boy brought it to me last night. What I like about your food is the simplicity and the salt of the earth. Chef to chef, no regrets. No, no, no. <laughs> I was doing this, you know, for quite a while, and I love doing it and meeting people. Absolutely spectacular. What a great chef. I can just taste the ocean. I think it wouldn't be right unless we finish with a good Caribbean-style bread pudding. So, Yogi, you're in. We start with the brioche bread, we cut in the dices. You could use any bread, water, any bread from the shelf, whether it be toast bread that you've got at home, starting to get a little bit firm possibly, dice it up, eggs. After baking the eggs, I add the sugar in that. Coconut. The reasons. So here we go, we have an egg, broken egg with the sugar and the coconut and some raisins. Regular milk. Coconut milk. So here we have the cinnamon. One teaspoon of ginger powder. Spoons of all spice here. We've got some nutmeg. I think like a small amount of nutmeg is enough in all my nice. pudding. Yep. That's okay. enough. Very nice. You can smell it from here. Yeah. Very nice. Nice, simple recipe again. Make sure you have soak it properly with the mixture. If you don't do that, you get dry pieces. It. Exactly, chef. We're going to encase it in a nice little cast iron pot. So Yogi makes this look so simple, Walter. Eh? He is the pudding master. Bake it off in the fire. These take about an hour and 20, an hour and 35 minutes just to slowly, slowly cook at the side of the fire. So the ganache is cream in the fire. Boil the cream, drop in the chocolate and the butter. We're going to take some of the conch that we had braised off and because of that heat and that chilli and the flavour, we're going to incorporate it into a nice chocolate sauce. So we're going to do a chilli chocolate ganache. It's come like a smooth texture and it dissolves completely. So Walter, we're just going to let the ganache sit and get nice and thick. All those flavours are going to infuse together. What I've done is just cut up some pineapples, skewered them off. I'm going to throw them straight on the fire. Let the sugars crystallise in the pineapple, let the rum soak in, get a nice charred effect on there, and that's us almost ready to present. Cool the hot pudding from the fire. So that's the fantastic bread pudding with a rum glazed pineapple, served in the banana leaf with a chocolate chilli ganache. So this is mm. the oh. bread pudding. Great job. Thanks. Thank you very much for being here today. I thank you. Your passion and commitment to the industry has transferred through me today in this culinary conch tour. Providencialis will never be the same. For a taste of history from Turks and Caicos. 
A Taste of History is made possible by Sandals Resorts, the luxury included vacation. For the past 10 years, I've gotten so many requests for recipes for my show, A Taste of History. Well, now you can find my favorite recipes in the Taste of History cookbook.